Hey, greetings. I'm Brock Jones, and I'm here at Florida A&M University in Tallahassee, Florida, at the Black Archives Museum, and today I'll indulge in a little bit of history. Here is a red breed table where slave masters would make slaves forcibly have sex. They also wanted the most pure slave so that they can have a more pure child, and ultimately they wanted to sell the kid off at a more higher price. That's the reason that they established this setting right here. Here we have African American soldiers during World War II, 1939 to 1945. This era was important and would be a great gateway to social equality for millions of people of African descent. And so a gentleman by the name of Freddie Hutchins, he was a captain in World War II. On one occasion, Captain Freddie shot down two enemy planes at once before his was shot down. His plane was destroyed so significantly that only thing left was the seat of the plane. And miraculously, Freddie Hutchins unbuckled himself and walked away. In this case before me are pictures of African kids primarily being thrown into the water to be eaten by alligators and then you can see them climbing up a tree to get away from them and as you can see this fan that says alligator bait and a picture up top and you can see how they portray black people as being beggars, maid servants. They even have pipes with alligators on them. And you can see the inhumane act that was played upon them. In the 1960s, um, the civil rights and segregation brought about KKK in a more prominent way, although there has been more errors of the KKK. But in this time, it was more brutal and more open and more accepted as a society. And it wasn't stopped. And you can, it was very harsh for people of color back then. More than 100 years ago, many commercial products in American society depicted derogatory portrayals of African Americans to spread racism and negative stereotypes towards them. Also, businesses and corporations that produce such products are just as guilty in regards to promoting hatred and racism. Queen Nzinga of Angola, 1582 to 1663, she was well educated. In 1624, she was named Ngola, which means ruler of the Mbunda people. During her reign from 1630 to her death in 1663, she gained respect from the Portuguese as a superior military tactician, diplomat, and shrewd political leader. Up top, we have depictions of Mammy and how up until the World War II, there were midwives, service, laundry women, and mammies, African-American women were. In the middle, we have a depiction of Southern living, living for African-American people. And at the bottom, as you can see, Aunt Jemima, and how that, came, that character came about for syrup and pancakes. As you can see here, displays a replica of a slave ship. Slave ships were used between 1500 and 1866 to carry approximately 12.5 Africans forcibly captured in war or kidnapped from their native land to America. There were hundreds of slave ships. The first slave vessel was Isabella, a British ship brought about 150 African people into the port of Philadelphia in 1864. Through the Middle Passage, nearly 2 million slaves perished to the journey across the Atlantic. And the ones that made it were sold in the new world. At the bottom are tools and shackles and a nigger feeder that they also use. Andre Nolan, the Hawk Dawson, Florida A&M alumni, born July 10, 1954. Years pass on. April 15, 1999, Florida native became the second player in baseball history to reach a record of 400 home runs and 300 stolen bases. And in 2010, Dawson was inducted into the Hall of Fame. And as you can see here, there's some memorabilia of him and picture frames of him while he was in the pros. Poking Horn, born June 16, 1921, a native of Pensacola, Florida, where his father was a pharmacist. In his senior year at FAMU, he enlisted into the military and became the first FAMU and accepted to the U.S. Air Corps and the first family to become a Tuskegee Airman. And to continue his honor for his bravery and courageous acts, 
Florida A&M University renamed Family Village to Lieutenant James R. Polkinghorne, Jr., as it once was in 1948, whenever the dorms were for married couples on campus. I hope you found some of this information valuable to you and informative. I'm um, Brock Jones reporting to you from the Black Archives Museum here on Florida A&M University in Tallahassee, Florida. Found the one you should never give her up. I think it's the way life changes when in love, yeah. I surround my soul with the positivity. That's why I don't worry about the things that I don't see, yeah. These days I don't worry about much. I think we should have some more fun. I still drink.